Alright, so that first one there is in general a polynomial. If you wanted to get a little more specific, it is a cubic binomial. Okay, it's cubic because of the exponent of 3, a binomial because it has two terms, bi meaning 2. Okay. Um, the second one is a linear function. Linear function, don't forget, uh, has, you can identify its slope and its y-intercept very easily. The slope is 2, the y-intercept here would be negative 9. <clears throat> um, the third one is also a polynomial, but more specifically, it's a quadratic. Quadratic because it's x squared. Um, it's also a trinomial if we wanted to name it based on the number of terms. It's got three terms here, trinomial. The next one is the most recent one that we've learned about. Rational function. It's a rational function because it has, uh, particularly because it has a variable in the denominator, <clears throat> but also because it has a variable in the numerator as well. That's why that's a rational function. And then the last one, hopefully you've seen it before, um, but it's what we're going to talk about today. The last one is an exponential function. Okay, the last one's an exponential function. And that's what we're going to focus on today. Alright, so we are going to start with the characteristics of exponential functions and we're also going to look at solving some exponential equations today. So the first thing that I need you to do is, uh, well we'll talk about the general form of an exponential function. It is f of x is equal to a to the x. a is a constant, okay, a is a number. Um, what sets an exponential function apart from a polynomial function? Yes, they both have exponents, but an exponential function has the variable in the exponent. Okay, the variable is the exponent. In a polynomial, the exponents are numbers. That relationship is flip-flop. Okay, so here the base is a number and the variable is the exponent for an exponential function. So we could have anything like 10 to the x, 5 to the negative x, 1 half to the x. Those are all examples of <coughs> exponential functions. We also have what we call the natural exponential. It's e to the x. Now e looks like a variable, but e is actually a number. Uh, you can find it there on your calculator. It's actually in two places. Um, if you press second and the button beside the number four, it'll pop up E and it automatically puts an exponent after it. Um, so if you put just the first power after it, you find that the value of E is approximately uh, 2.718 is approximately the value of E. Um, it also shows up, I'm not sure why they have it in two places, but they do a uh, second and the division button, uh, but there it doesn't put the exponent. Uh, so that would just give you the value of E itself. You would have to raise it to a power, um, which is what we're going to be doing <clears throat> most of the time, is we're going to be raising E to a power. It has lots of applications in biology and things like that. That's why it has its own... Um, uh, variable to represent that number. Okay, it's, it was named after a mathematician named Euler, uh, which actually started with an E. So, anyways, E looks like a variable, but it's actually a constant. Um, it's about 2.718, in case you're curious. Okay, so what I want you to do is uh, I want you within your group to split up, there are four exponential functions here, 10 to the x, 5 to the negative x, 1 half to the x, and e to the x. Okay, I want you to graph those on your calculator. If you've got four people in your group, then each person gets one. Okay, if you don't have four people in your group, then you need to just kind of split them up. Um, graph them in your calculator, and then we're going to talk about 
uh, all of these characteristics that we've talked about with all of our other functions as well. Domain, range, intercepts, increasing, decreasing, does it have any extrema, all that good stuff. I want you to identify as much as you can. Okay, let's talk about these properties here. Okay, uh, starting with domain. Remember, domain is what x values can I plug into the function and I get a y value out. <clears throat> okay, but more likely we're looking for are there any issues? Are there any x values that we can't plug in for one reason or another? So if we look at our table, um, you can scroll around a little bit and you'll, you'll find out that there, there don't seem to be any x values that cause any issues. And there aren't, okay? We can raise <clears throat> any number to any power that we want to, positive, negative, decimal, it doesn't matter. We can raise these numbers to any power that we want to and we're going to get an answer. So the domain of an exponential function is all real numbers. Okay, or remember we can write this several different ways. In interval notation, that would be from negative infinity to positive infinity. <coughs> okay, so domain, like a polynomial, is all real numbers. The range, the range talks about the y values. So I have two of them graphed here. I have e to the x, and I did uh, one half x. So they look kind of similar. There's kind of uh, flip flops across the y axis almost there. Uh, yeah, the y axis. Uh, but we're talking about the y values. Notice they don't really go below the x axis. And if we look at the table and we look at the y values, we don't get any negative numbers. We don't get anything less than zero, and that kind of makes sense. Because if we're thinking about raising one half to a power, we can't raise a positive number to a power and get a negative number. It's not going to happen, because a positive times a positive times a, I mean, if you multiply positives, you're always going to get positive numbers. And for the same matter, we cannot it cannot equal zero either. So for the range, for most exponential functions, it's going to be y is greater than zero. Not equal to, okay, because it can't equal zero either. Um, and in interval notation, that would be zero to positive infinity. Zero is the smallest y value that we can get, positive infinity is the biggest. <coughs> All right, x and y intercepts. Well, I just said that our function can't equal zero, so we can never actually cross the x uh, the x axis. So there are no x intercepts. And as far as y intercepts, figure where it crosses the y axis. When x is zero, what do we get? For both of these, we get y or not y, we get 1 for y. So our y-intercept is the point 0, 1. 0, 1 is our y-intercept. Because, if you think about it, for these two functions, e to the 0 is equal to 1. 1 half to the 0 is equal to 1. Anything to the 0 power is equal to 1, if you didn't know that property already. Anything to the 0 power is 1. Alright, intervals of increasing and decreasing. Well, when we look at exponential functions, e to the x here is the darker one. As we move from left to right, it's always increasing. Okay, it's always increasing, and then as we move from left to right, 1 half to the x is always decreasing. So we kind of got two cases here. Uh, when the base, when A is greater than 1, it's always increasing. When the base is greater than 1, it's always increasing. So the 10 to the x and the e to the x are increasing. Now, the 5... It's bigger than 1, but if you notice, the exponent is the negative x, so that kind of changes things um, and actually makes that base less than 1. 
So when the base is between 0 and 1, it's always decreasing. When the base is between 0 and 1, it's always decreasing. Now, extrema are maxes and minimums. Extrema are maximums and minimums. So if we look at the graph, I don't see any peaks or valleys. <clears throat> and there's a reason for that, because remember those are created when there's a change from increasing and decreasing. Or if these functions are always increasing or always decreasing, then you're not going to have any extrema. We talked about asymptotes briefly with uh, rational functions, and it turns out that we do have a horizontal asymptote here. Um, if you look at your function, look at how it's leveling off here. Okay, this for e to the x is leveling off on the left side. For the uh, one half to the x, it's leveling off on the right side. It almost looks like it disappears. <coughs> um, so that is a horizontal asymptote at y equals zero. So rational functions aren't the only functions that have asymptotes. Um, they're just the ones that we talk about it the most. End behavior. Okay, we can talk about what the ends of our functions are doing here. We do need to split them up into two camps again. We need to talk about when the base is greater than 1 and when the base is less than 1. When it's greater than 1, as our x values are approaching infinity, our y values, let's look at the graph, for the base greater than 1, as we're going over to the right, our y values are going up. So our y values are approaching positive infinity. As our x values are approaching negative infinity, the left side of this graph, our y values here, are approaching zero. Okay, you saw this interval notation on uh, the benchmark. <clears throat> so, or uh, this uh, infinity notation. So, I want to make sure that you're familiar with it. Let's talk about it for the other one. Okay, as our x values approach positive infinity for <clears throat> the one half to the x, as we approach positive infinity, our y values for this one are going towards zero. And for the left side, okay, as we're analyzing the left side of this function, our y values are increasing to positive infinity. 